today's lesson is about lipids. And this is chapter 25 in your book. You also have some PowerPoint slides. Um, one of the things I want you to be able to do is classify the type of lipid based on its structure. I want you to be able to rank uh, melting points based on um, structures and this will be for fatty acids and let's see if there's other um, yeah I think that's pretty much what we're going to do okay so those two learning objectives and then um, You'll be quizzed on this. We're going to have a quiz number 11, and it will be available Sunday and Monday on Canvas, not Canvas, um, on Sapling. And it will be over chapters 25 and also chapter 26, which is Monday's lesson, and that's going to be over polymers. And so that is quiz 11. That is just a makeup quiz or a replacement. So um, that will, quiz 11 is your last quiz for the semester, and that will replace your lowest quiz grade. So if you have a zero, it's a makeup. Otherwise, it just replaces. OK, so today's lessons. We're going to talk about lipids. And there are complex lipids, and there are simple lipids. And complex lipids um, are your long chain fatty acids, and they become hydrolyzed um, either in base or acid. Simple lipids are steroids, prostaglandins, and terpenes. So it's an example of those structures. Of a complex lipid. Would be. A triglyceride. So a triglyceride looks like this. And then you would have. Let's say 17 there, 17 carbons. And as you can see, this part here is an ester. Okay, so that's an ester. Um, and when you add acid, or it could be base, this triglyceride, because there's three of them, gets hydrolyzed. So if we um, hydrolyze this in base, it comes here, this goes up, and that leaves. And you do this three times, and you're going to get glycerol plus Three of these fatty acids. And you're going to get three of them. Now these can all be different. They don't have to be the same. They can be different um, fatty acids. This is how your body stores um, fats. So what happens is the fatty acid can cross membranes. Okay? So we have to hydrolyze a triglyceride into a fatty acid. The fatty acid can cross the small intestine into our blood. It can then, it actually gets on what I consider a boat, a cholesterol. You got your LDLs and HDLs. Um, so it can travel on these um, lipoproteins into cells. And then inside the cell, in your cytoplasm, is a glycerol component. And then with the loss of water, so if you lose water here, 
these fatty acids get stored as a triglyceride. So this is your um, energy source. And this is how um, fatty acids get stored in mammals and in plants. And so it's our energy source. That's what lipids are. And then when we're like running a marathon or something and we need to get um, more energy, we these get hydrolyzed and releases a fatty acid um, into the cytoplasm. They're normally um, even number carbon. So 17 plus the CH3, right? That's 18 carbons. And the reason why is the body will make fatty acids from acetic acid. And you can see that that is, and you'll study more of this in biochem, but that is a two carbon component. And that's why your fatty acids are all going to be um, even numbers, even number of carbons. Um, let's look at some of those fatty acids. Um, they're usually, they're unbranched, uh, 12 to 20 carbons. They're, multi, they're uh, melting points, which I told you you're going to have to be able to rank the melting points of these fatty acids. Uh, melting point increases as the number of carbons increase. That makes sense, right? And we're going to look at unsaturation and unsaturation will decrease a melting point. Um, so this fatty acid here, we'll draw it all out, one, two, sixteen. So that's sixteen carbons. And sixteen carbons, you have a really nice table. I'm, gonna, I'm looking at your table. 25 1 and this is the melting points of the different fatty acids it's slide number seven I would recommend that you um, focus on that uh, this is called palmitic acid and sometimes in biochemistry you actually have to learn all the names of these different fatty acids um, this melting point if you look at the slide is 64 degrees Celsius now, if you notice, uh, lauric acid has 12 carbons, and that melting point is 44 degrees. So, like we said, if we increase the melting, uh, the number of carbons, from 12 carbons to 16 carbons, we increase the melting point. But that's for saturated. That means there's no carbon-carbon double bond for saturated fatty acid. Um, these are usually in animal fats. They're saturated. They're usually like lard, and they're usually solids at room temperature. So let's look at it unsaturated and compare those. So if you look at the slide and you see, let's take oleic acid. Okay, oleic acid has 18 carbons and it has an unsaturation on carbon number 9. Normally these are like carbon number 9, 12, 15, 9, 12, 15. These are the carbons in which you have carbon-carbon double bonds and they're usually on the odd numbers. So this has one unsaturation, one Okay, so here's carbon number nine, and watch, I'm making that cis. Okay, so there's 18 carbons. This is a cis double bond. And that cis will actually cause a kink in this folding. And that folding lowers, that kink, because it's not able to stack, lowers the melting point. And so if you look at that melting point, it's 4 degrees Celsius. That's significantly lower even with 18 carbons. Okay, so an unsaturated um, fatty acid will have a lower melting point than any saturated 
fatty acid. Now, something else um, I will let you do for a pogo exercise, um, if you would like. Uh, watch uh, Lorenzo's oil. It has uh, Susan Sarandon and Nick Nolte. It's an old movie. But if you want to, you can write up, I just want one page, um, kind of a, a reflection. Uh, you do need to talk about the name of the compound and the structure that their son needed. Um, he, I want you to talk about the disease that their son had and what's what's the life expectancy today so basically three things if you address the name of the compound the structure um, that's talking about from the movie the disease their son had and and, and talk about the disease today uh, what is the medications what's the expectancy expectancy Expectation. That's worth five pogo points. Okay, so if you're in need of pogo points and you want a little break and uh, watch Lorenzo's oils, it talks about um, fatty acids and the diseases because our bodies make fatty acids. Um, but most of these um, ones with unsaturated, they're all going to be cis, carbon carbon double bond, and they're going to come. They're going to be oils. At room temperature okay so there's going to be and they're going to be coming from mostly plant-based materials now have you ever heard of saturated fats or trans fats have you ever heard of trans fats and you know they're bad for you right I'm thinking of McDonald's fries right so trans is this double bond trans how would that come about that would come about um, it's not natural so it's synthetic if you want butter, so you have a stick of butter, right? Make her stick of butter. Okay, here's our stick of butter. And um, you want it to be like spreadable. Margin, right? And so you don't want it to be really be solid. You want it to be spreadable. So you can take these uh, cis double bonds. So if you take something like Let's take uh, linolylic acid as, well, linolenic. Let's do linolenic acid, okay? And it has 18 carbons and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay, so these are three cis carbon-carbon double bonds. If you do catalytic hydrogenation, so hydrogen and palladium and say you reduce two of these what happens sometimes is you get incomplete reduction two three four five six seven eight nine ten twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and then this can go to um, a trans bond Okay, so that can go to a trans bond. And that is not natural and it's very unhealthy for you. And it can cause heart attacks, right? Okay, so that is your um, example of complex liquids. They are lipids, lipids, and they do get hydrolyzed. So you'll want to know that. Okay, the other type of lipids we talked about are... Um, simple okay and these include um, 
cholesterols or the framework is called a steroid. Okay, so that's one of them. So let's look at the steroid structure. You have one, two, three, four rings. Okay, so it's usually A, B, C, and then a D ring. D is a five-membered ring. Okay, and these are fused rings system. And a lot of times you have, like, so for cholesterol, cholesterol will have a double bond there, have a CH3 there, an OH here, a CH3 here, and then you will have something coming off of here. So you'll see that um, this is cholesterol. You can also, a lot of your um, hormones are steroids. So testosterone, um, estrogen, a lot of your birth control are um, substituted different types of steroids. Um, hormones are chemical compounds that are found in your blood. They're released into your bloodstream and then they can promote a um, physiological response, biological response, okay? So you see how that structure looks very different than the um, triglycerol, triglyceride. Okay, so what does a wax look like? So let's do two, let's do a wax. A wax, you can just go ahead, yes, you got ear wax, right? So let's do, um, this is a, maybe a sperm wax, sperm city. So this is a wax. And it's an ester, but you'll have one, two, three, four, five, One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So you have even number of carbons over here, and then same thing here. Okay, so you see that you have an ester, but um, it's different than the fatty acid because it has a long chain on both sides and that's what makes it a wax and structure determines function okay so that's two of your simple structures let's do number three number three would be a terpene terpene uh, we'll do alpha pinene And what I'd like for you to do here is count how many carbons there are. Okay, how many did you count? Let's see. Um, is it a multiple of five? It should be, yes. Okay, so um, terpenes are composed of five carbon isopentyl or called isoprene units. So this is, these are natural products. You can have like caraway seed, carbone. This is uh, the pine, so it smells like pine saw. They're isolated from their essential oils of plants and they come from the um, isoprene unit. So if you count this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten 10 carbons. So for it to be a, a terpene, it needs to be a um, multiple of five. And then the other structure is prostaglandins. And prostaglandins are structures that look like this. 
It has a five-membered ring here. Okay, and then carboxylic acid here. Okay, and um, a lot of times these are just called like PG, prostaglandin, and they, so prostaglandins are, um, they're biosynthesized, and you'll talk about this more. So that means the body makes them, um, and it starts with the starting material of arachidonic acid, And the prostaglandins, um, most of them have about 20 carbons. So if you count that carbons, you'll see that there are 20 carbons. It has a cyclopentene ring. Pentane ring. And it has long side chains that are trans to one another. Okay, so that means this hydrogen goes up and this one goes down. So these here, these long are trans to one another. Now, what's special about the, bio, um, the prostaglandins, they are biochemical regulators, okay? They're more powerful than the steroids. So I'll tell you a little story. Um, my, so my lineage of where I studied, so I studied um, under um, Luzio, Dr. Luzio at U of L. Okay, Dr. Luzio studied under E.J. Corey, and E.J. Corey got a Nobel Prize for being the first to synthesize the prostaglandins. Okay, so he got a Nobel Prize. And I'll put me here. Um, so before. Um, Prostaglandins cause stuff like erections, actually, and stuff like that. So um, it can cause these physiological responses. It can um, cause your, you to do vasodilation, your breathing. A lot of stuff that are just regulated naturally that we don't have any control over is from the prostaglandins. Okay, one other thing that I do want to mention before I leave the lipids topic is... Um, I want you to be aware of um, some kind of application. So we mentioned that, um, let's go back to these. So I, let's add one more thing on here, and that is application. So three things you need to learn. Okay, so let's add application. Okay, so one of these application is um, biodiesel. These are all in your slides. And so basically you would take that triglyceride, the animal fat, right? And if you wanted to make biodiesel, which some people did um, last year, you put it in about methanol and sodium hydroxide. And then what happens is you make try uh, you make glycerol, and then you make this ester, right? You make three of those. So this is a methyl ester. This is called a trans esterification, and this you can burn. And you can actually put that in a um, diesel engine and burn that, and that's biodiesel. It's a methyl ester. And it can just come from your cooking oil. So if you collect your cooking oil, you get some sodium hydroxide from the store and some methanol, you can make biodiesel. Okay, that's one application. Two application is to make soap. And we've talked about this, saponification. So if you just react that with sodium hydroxide, we're just going to take this same starting material. You're going to make, once again, glycerol, but you're also going to make uh, 
the soap. And this is soap. So if you read um, on your, um, maybe on your soap, you'll see something maybe it says sodium stare eight. Well, look, that tells you that there's 18 carbons, okay? It's from stearic acid, right? So um, that is your soap. Um, these soaps will clean our clothes because they will form micelles. And so what happens in a micelle is um, if you have a piece of dirt here, and dirt's typically positively charged, okay, because a lot of um, two-thirds of your periodic table are metals, okay? So, and dirt is made of a lot of transition metals. So what happens is, and these are just your fatty acids, and then they have these polar heads with the carboxylic acid, and see how they line themselves up here? And so soap will form a thing called a micelle, okay? And that's where the nonpolar portions, this is the nonpolar, will dissolve each other, like each other, and then the polar portions um, congregate together, aggregate. And then what you can do is then you can do a rinse with water and it will just rinse it away and take your dirt away. Now, so that's how we um, use that. If you have um, soap scum, well, that's because water gets treated at the water plant with calcium carbonate. This is limestone. And calcium carbonate forms a 2 plus. So you can see how we have the 1 plus here, okay? What happens with um, the calcium 2 plus is it forms this structure in your bath water, okay? So it'll form the calcium 2 plus, and so it will form two of these. And that becomes so big that it's uh, no longer soluble. So it becomes insoluble and it will precipitate out from the water. And that's soap scum. And the other thing I wanted to mention, of course, you can look at the synthetic detergents, is the lipid bilayer. So lipid bilayer. Um, so you've probably seen this structure if you've done any kind of biology, and most of you all have. So you have seen the lipid bilayer. And this might be the blood here, right? This is the blood. And that's polar. It's like water. And then inside there, you might have the cytoplasm, okay? And... The cytoplasm is where all your organelles are, and that's also polar. So, but this forms the lipid bilayer. So what does the lipid bilayer look like? Let's just say this structure here would form something like this. So you could form your triglyceride, but instead of tri, it's like a dye, right? So, and then on the third one here, you have a phosphate. Phosphorus likes five bonds, so, and then you usually have this ethylamine group, and it's charged, okay? And I do want you to kind of know that structure of a phospholipid. So, you see how you have two charges here. You have the negative of the phosphate, you have the positive of the ethylamine, and so it's it's really just this section here, and that makes it a phospholipid. And let's just look at that name before we leave this chapter, phospholipid. So you got the lipid here, and you got the phospho, and that is what these actual lipid bilayers are made out of, their structures. Okay, um, there you go, folks.